This is KCAL News, Los Angeles. I love that J.D. is young. It's about a new generation of Republican Party, and I think he's a young guy that can carry that. Now at four, the speculation finally over. Former President Donald Trump has chosen Ohio Senator J.D. Vance as his running mate. Good afternoon, I'm Amy Johnson. And I'm Juan Fernandez. Vance had been on Trump's short list of potential VP picks, and today it became official. Yeah, Trump announced the news on Truth Social as the Republican National Convention got underway in Milwaukee. Mm -hmm. KCAL political reporter Tom Wade is here with more on today's big announcement and the reaction it's getting. Tom. You know, I think you said it. There was a lot of speculation that it could be him, so not necessarily a ton of surprise, but, you know, mm -hmm. here we are. All right, so political experts say Vance is likely to fire up Trump's loyal base even more. He's even also been a fixture in conservative media. At one point, the Ohio senator was a fierce and outspoken critic of Trump, though, but clearly that was not a major factor for the former president. It is therefore my honor to nominate Ohio Senator J.D. Vance for the office of Vice President of the United States of America. Ohio Senator J.D. Vance officially declared former President Trump's running mate. The announcement made during Monday's Republican National Convention kickoff in Milwaukee. Any Economic comment, Donald Trump Jr., on America. your dad picking Bring Senator Vance for his officers. vice presidential I think it's an incredible pick. I think he's an incredible guy with an amazing story, both in business and in life. And I think it's just going to be an incredible person to help unify this country. And what did you say to your dad in recent days about why? Because he was considering other names, as you know. What did you say to him in recent days about why it should be Senator Vance? Listen, I think I've seen him on TV. I've seen him prosecute the case against the Democrats. I think no one's more articulate than that. And I think his story, his background, really helps us in a lot of the places that you're going to need from the Electoral College standpoint. And I think it's just going to be a great choice. Trump posted on his Truth Social as Vice President, J.D. will continue to fight for our Constitution, stand with our troops, and will do everything he can to help me make America great again. Congratulations to Senator J.D. Vance, his wife Usha, who also graduated from Yale Law School, and their three beautiful children, MAGA 2024. Professor of Politics, Jack Pitney. Trump chose him uh, not so much for geographical reasons. Trump's going to carry Ohio no matter what. Uh, does provide balance. Uh, Vance is exactly half Trump's age. Uh, so it does inject uh, an element of youth to the ticket. Um, Vance will be an effective spokesperson for the, uh, for the campaign, for the ticket. Um, in fact, he's going to have to watch himself that he doesn't uh, eclipse Trump, that he doesn't upstage Trump. Trump doesn't like to be upstaged. Senator Vance's star has been on the rise since 2016, when the 39-year-old published his memoir, Hillbilly Elegy. He was elected to the Senate in 2022 and has become one of the staunchest champions of the former president's Make America Great Again agenda. Vance was also a fierce critic of Trump, calling him a total fraud, a moral disaster, and America's Hitler. But since making those comments, he has done a complete 180 and has scored the coveted VP slot. Well, he's very ambitious, and he decided a few years ago that becoming a Trumpist would be the path to power, and so far it's worked out for him. Meanwhile, President Biden is blasting the pick. He's a clone of Trump on the issues. A clone of Trump on the issues. So I don't see any difference. After the attempted assassination of President Trump over the weekend, Vance posted on X that President Biden's rhetoric led directly to the shooting. Amy? Um, thank you. Well, the head of the Department of Homeland Security is facing some harsh questions about the security labs at Saturday's Trump campaign rally shooting. And tonight we're getting more details on the investigation into that assassination attempt. Here's KCAL News reporter Masha Saidi. CBS News has confirmed that on the day of the assassination attempt, the shooter purchased a box of ammunition with 50 rounds. He fired from the rooftop of a building about 400 feet from the stage. Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas, whose department oversees the Secret Service, fielded questions Monday about how the gunman was able to get that close before Secret Service counter snipers shot and killed him. An independent review will be conducted to understand the facts regarding protection of the event and make findings and recommendations accordingly. President Trump's ear was grazed by a bullet. Two other people were hurt. 57-year-old Marine veteran David Dutch and 74-year-old James Copenhaver. Both are now in stable condition. Retired Fire Chief Corey Comparatori was fatally shot. 
He was a man that was full of love. The FBI identified the shooter as 20-year-old Thomas Matthew Crooks of Bethel Park, Pennsylvania. Investigators say they found rudimentary bomb materials at his home and in his vehicle. Neighbors say they saw nothing out of the ordinary. We have nothing to share, to, to make some logic out of something that's completely illogical. Um, so uh, they were they were very friendly. Law enforcement sources say the rifle found on the shooter's body was legally purchased by his father well before the attack. So far, investigators believe Crooks acted alone and the motive remains unknown. He was a registered Republican but did make a $15 donation to a progressive organization in 2021, according to the Federal Election Commission. Masa Saidi, Butler, Pennsylvania. A U.S. law enforcement official familiar with the investigation is telling CBS News the shooter visited a gun range in the days before the assassination attempt. CBS News also confirmed with law enforcement sources that the shooter's father called local police after the shooting on Saturday. Law enforcement sources also telling CBS News tonight that investigators going through the shooter's phone have not found anything that indicates his motive.